so madly into every room I get has no bath and I just want to go soak in the tub. <laughs> You know what? We should have done this interview in the, the bathtub. bathtub. <laughs> that would have been great. It's too late now. Ooh, you know, uh, it's quite a uh, Ted Bundy, I think, was something that, uh, and black hole. Is it black hole in your heart? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those two were like changed a lot. In Mark Dreffy is a, a fifth member in a sense. He's our producer. He's a Swedish guy that looks like a mad scientist. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this record, he really felt a lot more comfortable, I think, with us. And so he just went, he dived right in. And, uh, Black Hole, he had this great idea for this orchestra part that right. really brought the song up. And, and uh, same with Ted Bundy, we had this Sgt. Pepper. He was so excited about yep. the Sgt. Pepper idea and tuba. And, right. It was, uh, yeah, those ones changed a lot. Those are fun. It's a label thing. The label nowadays wants to have some kind of visual way to absorb music as opposed to just putting songs up. So I guess we would do these new instant rap things. So before mm -hmm. the record comes out, they'll release songs uh, at certain intervals leading up to the release of the record. And so they don't want to just put those <clears throat> songs out into the ethos. They want to put them out there with some kind of they call them visualizers yeah and then we don't really have that much control we just they say send us hey what do you guys think about this and we'll say oh we like this like this try to change in this or do that yeah, well i think sure. youtube is a way a lot of people consume music now. yeah so in order to have music on youtube I mean, you could just put the album there for three and a half minutes or whatever or else you can create you want to engage a little bit them, of yeah. a story right try to engage the yeah, listeners for sure. Yeah, well, the, the car thing was definitely done intentionally. There, there's no parallels between the two songs, but you know, maybe maybe unconsciously, because you're, the RX was about to say the opioid problem, and I think that usually comes hand in hand with uh, anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. which is what World Keeps Pain is about. Yeah. So you know, a lot of these things kind of happen naturally, but I think there's almost like this this other force that motive drives you towards an idea. So I I. I I don't know why, but I wanted to have the car back in this, in the video, and us in the car. So I don't know. If it's we're almost like we're absorbing all of what's going on. It's like we're just watching, yeah. we're spectating, we're driving around and seeing, seeing what's happening. Hmm. The fans a little bit, I think. I mean, we put a, a record called Savages, which I think was our heaviest record, but we feel like the most well-received songs were Angel and Blow, and it was like it was not the heavy songs. And for me, it was like a bit of a wake-up call, no pun intended, but it right. truly was because it was like, you know, we could go try to make another heavy record, but it felt like our fans were telling us that that wasn't what they were wanting. And so, uh, I mean, a lot of it was also tied to buying a piano and starting to write songs on piano and musical direction changed a little bit there. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be confusing because... Uh... When you sign a record deal, you, you all of a sudden have to do things. It's a business, right? And things it is about fans and stuff. But we try to remind ourselves, like in the beginning, when we got started and we were jamming in my dad's basement, there we had no fans. No influence. There was no influences. There was no feedback. There was no people telling us, "Oh, more of this, less of this." This song didn't work. And so I think if you approach every record like that, you will be successful mm -hmm. on whatever whatever you're looking at as success. So I think our, 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 the shift came from just, uh, you know, at least for me, it was just going to a place where I wasn't being influenced by anything other than how, this is what I want to do. I'm going to write songs on piano. Right. Right? I'm going to do it. Man. Yeah. Why not? I mean, it's, it's tough because, you know, people have also asked us, like, how come you guys haven't done, like, a live DVD? I'm like... I don't know, Grandpa, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so it's tough now to release yeah. even... Uh, we are confused why we're almost we're still well, releasing albums. Yeah. It's like, and, and we want to, obviously. It's more like the label. It's, uh, people are digesting music so quickly now we can't even make music fast enough. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm all about it. You know, one It'd be day, fun. I don't know. Yeah, it would be fun. Joe, Great. go first. Oh, wow. uh, no, I don't know. Well, I mean, uh, it would be say nothing. I feel like uh, I feel like we've made some great records in the past, but I would say nothing. It feels different. It feels like it's an important record. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels like uh, the context and the content of the songs are important, and uh, it's it's cool because I feel like just 
doing stuff like this and talking to people and hearing people ask questions about the content and the context, it feels like we're talking about important stuff that really affects people's lives. And so, I mean, I, it's it's rewarding to be doing something like that uh, after being in the business for 20 years, feel like you're actually making music and your music's helping people too. Yeah, right. for sure. So, I mean, for me, it's say nothing. I don't know that anybody... I, I feel the same. Absolutely. Oh, you say, say nothing? I uh, say say nothing, yeah. Yeah, I think probably say nothing. It, you know, the, the problem is, is um, for me at least, the, the lyricist is that once I write a lot of the stuff, it's like gone. I don't. I don't want to hear it anymore. It's like therapy in a, in a sense. Yeah, like you get so, it all out there. Yeah. yeah. So like, like I went back and listened to some of our stuff on our first record because we're playing some, some stuff on the first record, and I'm like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> like I sound completely different. I remember something <coughs> that we did. Yeah. Because I just don't. People are like you listen to your music. It's like no, I just don't. So say nothing is is fresh in the mind for me. So that's something that I'm super proud of. Yeah, it, but in two years, I will have probably forgotten about this record. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's, it's nostalgia. So, Tragically Hip was like, you know, I had quite a few friends that was their all-time favorite, like, it's all we listened to. I remember the back of Raymond the Juicy's truck, <laughs> and he had this like king cab where he had to sit sideways. <laughs> it was the style, and it sucked. But but just his favorite band and Jeff Kane's favorite band just tragically hit all the time, and so we just grew up on it. So it wasn't even like a musical influence; it was a cultural influence. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it was really sad. Uh, you never know. We we you know we never say no to anything. We're always open for to collaborating with. And we're actually not people. on his label anymore. That's not true. Okay. No, uh, yeah. This current record, so uh, we don't know. Maybe he wouldn't want to collaborate with us. Well, that's <laughs> true. <It's possible. laughs> Who knows? Yeah, the the it's it's interesting because to me, is the the old stuff you talked about, the bitch came back and bad girlfriend. And, and stuff to me that makes me feel that seems to be more squirmy lyrics which which is ironic because i think with a lot of our fans they're much more comfortable listening to bad girl right. and which came back and right the more misogynistic stuff where our new stuff i feel so comfortable talking about that it seems like it's very squirm you know what i'm talking yeah. about squirmish yeah, for a lot of our fans squeamish squeamish is yeah. squeamish uh, squeamish, works. squeamish sounds like you're gonna throw up. <laughs> Very you know what I'm talking about? It, yeah. it, it makes people uncomfortable to talk about domestic abuse. Yeah. What's weird is we were playing a show the other night, and I was doing a History of Violence, which is about, but, and this girl and her boyfriend were in the front row, and she just looked scared at him the whole time. I was like, yeah, it was weird. Uh -oh. He would not look at her. Some awkward like, tension there. I, I, mean, I have no idea what it could have been. But, yeah. yeah. So you, I think that it, it's uh, it's interesting. It's uh, it's hard to gauge, right? Because it is there's a lot of stuff that's heavy, and a lot of people don't they don't they want to sometimes just shut up and play. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what from our shows or something? No, oh, for I CD? have CDs. Nice. Oh, savages! Oh, you, want a, you want a tidbit for savages? Is that because it was our fifth record? We we're gonna make the V, or we did. Or the V was going to be like big, or it was in some of the promo stuff, the five. Yeah. And so people are like, so your new record, Savages. Savages. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, Savages. Exactly.